In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Windows 11 machine to use a Commodore 64 emulator so you can dial into Commodore 64 bulletin board systems. And we just need three pieces of software on our machine to do that. We need a program called TCP Serial. This is a modem emulator that runs on your machine and it emulates an old Hayes modem. We're going to need a Vice Commodore 64 emulator. And then, of course, we're going to need a terminal for the Commodore 64, and we're going to use one called CCGMS. CCGMS was a terminal program that I used as a kid in the mid-80s that I used to use for all my BBSing. So to get started, we need to get a copy of TCP Serial. And you do that by going to the GitHub page. There's a link for it in the description of this video. This project is a fork of another project called TCP SER4J which is a Java version of TCP SCR, which was originally written C. Both are written by someone named Jim Brain. The product is awesome. The only minor catch with it is that it runs on Java 1.2, which is a really old version of Java, and it requires a DLL or shared object that's specific to the Linux or the Windows 32 platform. This version that I put together is completely platform neutral and will run on any machine that's Java 21. So you should be able to run this on Mac, on PC, on ARM, on Intel, and anything. But at the heart of it is Jim Brain's original code, and it is truly awesome. So here we are at the GitHub repo. To download this software, we're just going to click on its versions link over here for versions 1.00. And as you can see, I just published this very recently. So we're going to click on this, and we're going to grab this zip file. We're going to open it up. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to put it on the C drive to make life easier for us. Let's run this PC, C drive, and I'm just going to drag this in here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open a command prompt. You press Windows R, and you type CMD, and now we're command prompt. And we're going to type in CD backslash TCP serial dash 1.00, and this is what was inside the zip file. All we have to do to run this is type TCP serial. Now we're going to get an error when we run it that says we don't have Java on this machine. We need to go get a copy of Java 21, and it gives you a couple of hints as to what websites you can use. So we're going to go to this adoptium.net. And again, there's a link in the YouTube description for this as well. All right, once we go to this website, we're going to allow cookies, and we want this right here. It's exactly what we want the LTS version of Java 21. So we're going to click on it, and it's going to start an installer. Then all we have to do is just click Next a bunch of times. See, didn't even look at it. Just nexted my way through it. I'm going to click on Finish. And now you'd think you'd be able to just run it again, but you still get an error. Whenever you install new software in Windows and you have a command prompt open, you need to exit it and relaunch it for it to see the new changes. So we're going to press Windows R, type CMD again, go back to this TCP serial directory, and just type in TCP serial. Now you can get a little message here from Windows. We're just going to say allow. And that's it. Our modem emulator is up and running. So we're just going to kind of move that aside here. What this program is doing is it created a, uh, a server listening on a TCP IP port, and a program can connect to it and use its modem emulator. It can send, you know, AT commands. It can connect to uh, bulletin boards through the internet. So the next piece of software we need is the Vice emulator. So we'll just kind of hit Vice emulator here. All right, so we're going to click this first link here. We're going to go to download. And I'm going to grab this 64-bit 3.8 version here. So we'll click this. And just give this a second to start. You don't actually have to click anything, it'll just start on its own. There it goes. And we're going to open this up. And just like before, we're going to right click, go to File Explorer, and we're just going to put this on a root of our C drive. So this PC, and we're just going to drag this over here. Okay, we can close our web browser, we're done with that. We're going to go into the vice directory, into the bin directory, and we're looking for a program called x64sc. This is the emulator for the Commodore 64. I'm going to do a right click, show more options, send to the desktop as a shortcut. 
there it is. Um, when I double click this, Windows will sometimes give you this kind of cryptic error message, search for the app in the store. We're gonna hit no. What you need to do is you need to right click on its executable and do properties and check this unblock option. Okay, so now when we run our vice simulator, it'll come right up. All right, so we're gonna do a really quick configuration of our emulator here. So let's close some of these windows out. Make the screen a little bit bigger so we can get a better view of our emulated environment here. Here we go. Now, as you can see, it's pretty fuzzy. So we're gonna go into preferences. We're gonna go into settings. We're gonna drop into machine. Go to the model. And I like to work on a 64 uh, NTSC version of the Commodore 64. I'm here in New Jersey in the United States and this is the Commodore that I kind of grew up with. So that's the one I, I'm gonna choose. You can choose any of them. We're gonna go into display, into VIC2, and we're gonna turn this to unfiltered so the screen is nice and clear and easy to read. Now the most important part, getting the modem up. So we're gonna go into the peripheral devices area and we're gonna choose RS-232. Now the screen looks kind of confusing, but there's really two different ways you can configure modems here and that's kind of what it's showing. This section here where it says use port RS-232, this is what I'm used to as a kid. And the back of your Commodore on the far left was a port where you plug your modem into. And most of us had a 1660 uh, and, or a 1670, which was a 300 and a 1200 baud modem. Uh, towards the end of my Commodore uh, life, if you will, I had an Apertech modem that was 2400 baud. And that was about the fastest you can plug into the user port. So that's what we're going to emulate now. So we're going to choose to enable the emulation of a modem there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to choose device 3. We had 2400 baud. And this is device 3. And you'll see a TCP IP address here, which is our own machine. And you'll see a port number here, 25232. And if you look at our window over here, we can see that our TCP serial is listening on port 25232. It's a 384, but that's okay. We're going to use it at 2400. So all we have to do is check this box here and we're going to hit close. And now the emulation is ready. Let me just kind of resize this window a little bit. I want to make sure it looks nice. <laughs> there we go. So in order for this to uh, connect to that with those settings, we have to restart the machine here. So actually I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to do a save setting. So this time, anytime we restart the emulator, it'll have these settings. And now we're going to do file, reset, power cycle the machine. And there's a shortcut key for Alt F12, but we're just going to click it here. And now we're ready to go. All right, so now let's go grab a copy of that term program. And there's a link to the D64 in the description. And here's where you get it from. Here we go. This program is called CCGMS 2021. I believe there's another program out there that's like a um, that took this version and added more stuff onto it. But this version seems to work pretty well for me. Uh, although in reality, you can use any terminal program of the era. But I'm choosing again this one because this is what I grew up with. Not the 2021 version, of course. I grew up with it when I came out in the 80s. So we're going to open this zip file. And we're going to drag this D64 to the desktop because that's all we care about. Then we're going to close this window and close our browser. All right, so we're going to go to File. We're going to attach a disk image on drive 8. We're going to choose Desktop. And there is our terminal emulator. So we'll double click this. And now it's attached. So if we take a quick look on a disk of CCGMS, you're going to see just kind of a bunch of files. The one that we care about is that second one. And you load it by typing load, quote, CCG, asterisk, quote, comma, eight, comma, one. And it'll take a moment to load. And we're going to press Alt W to kind of speed that load up. That's going to warp the C64 emulator to high speed. Press Alt W again to turn it off. And you'll see that CPU number come down. And we're just going to type in run. All right, if I type it 18, press enter, you'll see that we have an okay prompt. So back in the day, modems used something called the AT command set. And what's happening right now is when I type AT into the Commodore 64, the emulator is sending it to this program on the right called TCP serial, which is emulating that modem. And then when we connect to something, the traffic is going to the TCP serial, out to the internet, to the bulletin board, Back to TCP serial and back into the vice emulator.
So it's kind of neat. So there's a whole list of bulletin boards we can connect to. So once again, I'm going to open my browser up and there's a website called the C BBS outpost uh, at servebbs.com. And this keeps a list of uh, active Commodore bulletin boards that are available on the internet. And there's quite a few of them on here to choose from. So you can pick any of these. And here's how you connect to one. So we're just going to kind of move this over here. Uh, and we're going to connect to a bulletin board called, um, we'll connect to this one here, the 13th floor BBS. And the way that you connect is you type in ATDT. And what this really means is the AT part means attention, telling the modem it's going to do a command. The D stands for dial. The T stands for tone. Now, of course, we don't actually have a analog phone line, so this is all just kind of fiction. And then normally you'd put a phone number, but here you're going to put in the host and the port. So here you'll see the address is 13th.hoyvision.com. You put a colon and then you put that number 6400. We're going to press enter and oh look, we've got a connection. We got some text here and it says we're connected. So they want you to press a delete key. So we're going to press backspace. There we go. Color graphics mode. Well, this is exciting. Do we want to use 40 or 80 columns mode? Well, we're going to use 40 column mode because we're at Commodore 64. And now we're connected to an actual BBS on the internet. And in it's full CG glory. We get to see some graphics. As you can see from the welcome message, they're running an actual hardware. They're running with a hard disk. They're running the C64 at 20 megahertz, which is pretty impressive. I didn't know you could do that. And they're using an ACIA cartridge, which is like a SwiftLink running at 30.4K. So this bulletin board is uh, running on some pretty serious juice for a Commodore. So we're connected, and then of course we can continue on. But I want to show you how to hang up from a bulletin board real quick. So once you're done with the BBS, um, usually there's a way to hang up. And I know if you press A for board here, it's going to hang up on me. But let's pretend for a moment that we're stuck on a screen. You could switch your modem back to command mode by typing three pluses relatively slowly. So if I go plus, 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 it jumps to an OK prompt here. And I'm back to type AT and I'm here again. And you could type ATH just to hang up on them. And now it's hung up on a bulletin board. Um, so that pretty much emulated a 2400 baud experience. But if you wanted to do something a little quicker, we wanted to use this crazy 38.4K mode. Commodore 64 of the box didn't really support that, but you could buy a, a SwiftLink cartridge to plug in the higher speed modem so the Commodore can communicate even faster. So I'm going to show you how to emulate that. So what we can do is we can go to Preference into Settings, and we're going to make a couple small changes here. We're going to uncheck this, and you'll notice over here that it, we just disconnected from our TCP serial server, right? Um, we're going to change the baud rate here to 38.4. We're going to choose serial 3 up here, so it matches serial 3 here. And this time we're going to enable ACIA RS-232 interface simulation. We're going to press close. Now we do have to reset this machine, so we're going to press that Alt F12 key to reset it. And then we're going to reload CCGMS. I'm going to warp this in real quick. I pressed Alt W and I'm going to press Alt W again to bring it back to normal and type in run. Now, CCGMS does default to using the user ports. We have to make a change. So we're going to press the F7 key to get the down parameters. So we're going to press M and we're going to change it to say Swift Link slash Turbo DE. Then we're going to change the baud rate to 38.4. You'll notice that the connection just opened in the background. We're going to save this configuration by pressing S. This way, the next time we load CCGMS, it'll default to this mode. All right, I'm going to press Enter. So now we're running at 34K. So let's connect to um, a different bulletin board to see how much faster it is. Now this board is a little bit different, but it's on the same uh, domain. It's called 8bit.hoyvision.com colon 6400. Now this time, we're at 38.4, and you can already see just how much faster this is. I mean, this is flying. I'm going to press 40 column mode, and then we can get our menu here. Um, my Commodore 64 back in the day did not run this fast. <laughs> so this is another bulletin board we're connecting to. We're going to press Enter to continue. And I actually have a login ID in this board, but I'm not going to log into right now. You should definitely check it out, though.
So if you give the TCP serial a try, uh, let me know how it worked for you. I especially want to hear from people running it on Linux or Mac if there's any issues, because I've only tested this on Windows 11. So, But as always, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this useful. Take care.